in this video I've got to try and put this engine back together again hmm firstly I need to try and clear something up I, I got a bit um, carried away and kind of forgot where I was in the previous video so yes what started out as trying to trace an oil leak quickly turned into a 652 cc um, conversion and um, I thought I'd better talk a bit more about that the, the original plan was for the car to go to Sparrow Automotive and he was going to um, try and sort the oil leak and I'd also talked myself into the 652 conversion uh, that takes it from 602 cc up to 652 it should boost torque and power um, by perhaps as much as 20 percent um, which sounds a lot but is you know that's taking it to just over 30 rather than 29 of each power and torque uh, the same on a 2cv engine and um, the, the plan is to just try and make her a bit less frenetic so you're not constantly having to down change and get the revs back up above 4000 rpm to access any sort of power so that's the plan or that was the plan but then the oil leak got kind of catastrophic to the point where I just didn't dare drive her um, anymore so she's been off the road for a while now and um, then I thought well you're not going to like it if I just hand over a load of money to someone and he does a complete rebuild on the engine and um, I just turn up and drive it away and that's job done so I thought that's not very satisfactory as much as I like um, Sparrow Automotive and the work Pete does there it wouldn't make for a very interesting video so I thought well I've done pistons and barrels before if you go and search for my Citroen Diane video complete with naked test drive um, the car not me don't worry um, you, you can see where I have done this before so um, I thought well I'll just do it and well you know some people would take the engine apart and rebuild it completely and clean it all and all this sort of thing that's not the way I operate come on this is Hubnut this is not an engineering channel uh, I've said this before so my plan is just to put new barrels and pistons on and we'll be away um, oil cooler uh, I must talk about because a number of people said well why don't you just um, reflare it and, and bend the pipes a bit the pipes don't really like bending they're very very fragile aluminium in fact I think this had probably started breaking before I even got in there um, they are notoriously weak um, so there are various options some people said where well, you could get flexi lines and a different oil cooler but I like the 2CV oil cooler um, if you look at the fins on them they're kind of slightly staggered because the airflow will come at them this way from the um, engine fan as it goes around so they kind of aimed at that the aftermarket ones tend to be straight whether it makes any difference I don't know but I think um, these are a better idea and it just so happens that I've got a friend who agrees and not only does he agree he had a spare oil cooler um, sadly his engine managed to completely lunch itself um, he rebuilt it with a slightly dodgy crankshaft and it all went horribly wrong um, so I do need to blow this one out just to make sure there aren't any bits in it he's pretty confident there aren't but yeah th this this will be going on that is the plan and um, if you can see um, there's a rubber seal there there's an olive underneath that and that's how it attaches the pipes aren't flared in any way so there's an olive there as you're tightening against that effectively and um, that will hopefully screw it into the block and all will be well so that's really really good uh, I need to get that fitted probably as a next step because it's not very safe there it will get damaged on my horrendously messy floor oh remember people talking about the box and how long that was going to be around that's been used to store nuts and bolts I think all the exhaust nuts and bolts are in that compressor box so all is well but yes I do need to tidy up again this job quickly got out of hand it was meant to be a quick investigation it's ended up becoming an engine rebuild once that's done I really do need to have a tidy up because the next vehicle due in here is the Fox hey <laughs> So suddenly Ellie's jumped the queue a bit and the poor fox is still sitting out on the driveway. But the fox is what we want in here really. And um, anyway, I've been waffling on for over four minutes already. Um, what we probably need to do is do some work. Now the really eagle-eyed people noticed that I was trying to undo these unions with a 17mm spanner. And it clearly isn't really a 17. I mean it does the job. 
but 17 it isn't. Fortunately, I'm very lucky. I do actually have a 16 mil spanner. Why I didn't just go and get that, I don't know. But you'll see that fits on there an absolute treat. And that's very, very Citroen in a way. Um, if you work on two CVs, you quickly discover that um, consistency is not something they go by. There's a lot of um, 11 mil um, headed nuts and bolts like that oil feed there. Um, so they're easy enough to consider. But um, yeah, every now and then it throws in a curveball. So these are 16s. Um, I think the shock absorber nuts are 18s when everything else tends to be 17 or sort of uh, 17 or um, 19. So yeah. Oh, something else I must discuss as well. Someone worried that I got a gator gone because of grease being flung around on the. Um, well, that's not as secure as it might be, I, I will concede. Uh, it's not split gaiters, it's just that I've probably overfilled them through this grease nipple. And um, excess grease just gets flung out as the, the um, drive shafts go around. All good fun. Right, I do now have a pair of circlip pliers. So um, I think I am going to get these barrels and pistons back on just so I can cover them up and they're not exposed. Um, I mean... It's, dust settling already so let's let's get those back in and then we'll change the oil cooler right i have the new oil cooler to go on uh, i've used copper grease under the terminals which i've carefully cleaned off the rubber seals because i don't think rubber and copper grease are great friends but um yeah hopefully this will now be all right we'll refit that into position it bolts on to this pod here with those spacers to um keep it nice and secure and a big long um, 11 mil bolt there we go and that's the old ones uh, that seal came got stuck in the hole so I had to use long nose pliers to pull it out and the other seal is still on the Union that's the one that snapped off um, so we'll take it nice and easy and get this one back on again it feels like it's taken pretty much forever but got the crankshaft seal out um, had to deploy all, all manner of violence using many different tools, none of which are appropriate for the job. But there we go. The bugger is out, and I don't think I've managed to damage the housing. So now we have a new seal, which um, doesn't quite fit, obviously, so I, I need to find a good size socket to tap that in. Phew. Right, that head is back on. Um, that was qu quite clean, so I'm pretty confident that's going to seal well. Um, new push rod tube seals. You have to be very careful to make sure the push rods have engaged in the block. Um, here are the new seals. These are Burton seals. What I like to do personally is try and push them down a bit so you've got a nice bit of tube showing. Um, I do it more than that. I just can't do it one-handed. Um, so you can try and make sure these are engaged in the in the block um, because if you don't it's very easy to completely screw up the ends of these if they're not actually in you start talking up the heads ask me how I know but um, I'm a little concerned about the state of this one a lot of ickiness around here and it's quite black and horrible in there as well uh, I wonder if um, that's all a sign of it burning oil on this side um, certainly rather unpleasant so I think I'm going to lap this head in um, it's where you use an old barrel uh, preferably that's had the fins knocked off it and uh, a bit of grinding paste to grind away um, that surface at the top um, let me grab my old cylinder head I don't mean cylinder head I mean barrel um, this one had a fair bit of um, anger unleashed upon it um, which took off all those cooling fins that should be there. And the reason you do that is because if I just rotate this head upside down a moment, if it's still got the fins on, uh, so make sure I get the right end, um, I wouldn't be able to rotate it very far because the fins would just impact on the pushrod tubes. So as you don't really want to remove your pushrod tubes, you get an old um, barrel and you take the fins off and then you can rotate it and that'll lap the head up. Um, I, I think I covered that in a previous video, possibly the Diane, so I'm not going to bother now. Um, I'm just going to get that done. Right, we've got this head back on now. Uh, after sorting out 
uh, that lapping. Um, still got that there, but I'm hoping a new exhaust manifold gasket will sort that out. Always remember to put the cowling on before you put the manifold on, because good grief is it upsetting when you suddenly realise you haven't done that. Um, almost as upsetting as realising you haven't put the um, oil feed to the head uh, pipe back in. Got a brand new one of those. Um, so we'll do that as well before putting the manifold back on. Oh, it was going so well. Um, people who know their way around a 2CV engine will know what I've done wrong here. It's what I do every time. It's what I reminded myself earlier not to forget to do. Yes, I forgot to put the cowling on. And um, there is no way to fit the cowling once the manifold's on. So it's going to have to come off again. <laughs> right, so this is where I'm leaving it tonight. We've got the manifold on, uh, this time with the cowling already in place. Um, I've only nipped these, I mean I haven't even done those very tight at all. Uh, it's just to make sure that they're in and secure before we talk um, the head nuts. I think, but I'm going to check, that you initially do 10 newton meters, then 20 newton meters. Um, on these um, that's my hope anyway uh, I'm going to check that because I've had enough it is 10 past 10 at night and um, on a Friday night I think I would rather be doing something else like sleeping um, so I've refilled the sump again so we've got a full load of oil in there and that's because I'll want to check the valve clearances before I put the rock covers back on so I'll be turning the engine with its new um, barrels. Uh, I did put plenty of oil in the cylinders um, before I did that. Got the new Cooper nickel pipe. I'm going to have to adjust that slightly to make sure it snakes its way around the cowling. You see it's meant to come out of that gap there. And similar story over here. I think it's actually meant to come out. Oh no, that's for the fuel pump. So yeah, that, that will come out the gap there. Secured down the bottom here. I've taken the points box off and um, left it at this stage because I'm going to fit electronic ignition. Uh, the chap who gave me this oil cooler also gave me a 123 electronic ignition and um, just because it's so much easier to do the timing I think I'm going to go down that route because it's got a timing light on the box itself. Very easy to set the static timing although it's always worth checking these things with a strobe if you can be bothered. So hopefully tomorrow I can get the engine started. Um, that'd be good fun. Um, I'm slightly concerned that there might be leaks everywhere, but um, yeah, we, we shall have a go. Uh, so I've got retorking to do there. I've still got the carb to rejet and rebuild, um, but um, we're starting to get out. I must remember to bolt the chassis back down again as well. Um, with the engine mounts and the front cowling and all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's still plenty to do. You know, it, it took a couple of hours to rip the engine apart, but getting it back together again, replacing stuff that needs replacing as you go, always takes longer. So, um, without further to do, without further to do, without further ado, uh, I shall just tread on multiple tools. Can't wait to tidy this carriage up again and say, Good night, Ellie. Good night. Ah, oh, jeepers. It really is as much of a mess as I remember. You'll notice I've got a nice working space for me, just there, with all my tools handily to hand. But uh, anyway, it's another day. Uh, today is the 3rd of November, I think. And, um, yeah, more to do. Right, we've got the torque settings. That wherever you look, there's different settings, but I'm going to go with the settings that say go to nine pound foot for the initial tightening, tightening, and then we'll go up to seventeen. And um, I'll also go around in sequence, just doing each one. Oh, that's already at torque. That one's there, and that one's there. And now we take the. This is really difficult to do one-handed. Right, so I've adjusted that to 17 pound foot. We'll start on front left.
There we go. Now the rear. And finally, the bottom one. Jobs are good and repeat on the other side. So with the cylinder head studs now retightened, I can now torque down the inlet manifold. So you only do those loosely to start with, um, just to make sure they fit nicely, because um, you know, there can be alignment issues. So um, yeah, that's the next step. So the next stage is going to be to um, reject the carburetor. Um, so to do that, we'll take the lid off. Um, various screws all the way around it. Very important to sort of go around loosening each one a bit at a time, or you can deform the aluminium. Um, and similarly, when you're refitting, don't go all the way tight on one. You go keep working your way around them. So um, let's get the top off. Uh, you'll, you'll notice the 2CV uses a twin choke carburetor. It's a Solex unit. And um, that should now come free. There we go. There are the floats. Fair bit of muck down in those float bowls. So we'll give those a clear out as well. Uh, thankfully the seal on the bottom is in good condition. So I think we've got a new one to go on. A lovely smell of petrol in the air now. That's stinking the entire house out because that's the office up there. Mmm. Right, so uh, we'll just use some um, paper towels to get rid of that, and then I'll have something that'll be useful for lighting a fire um, in the near future. Okay, this is a little bit puzzling. There are the two jets, but we've got jets all over the place. There's one down there, there's one there, and there's one there. And uh, there's nothing to say which jets you're meant to be replacing. If I was to have a guess, I'd suggest it was the primary, because that one's open just when you need it. But, um, yeah, to be honest, I'm a bit unsure. I think I will have to do some research. Oh, good old Burton. They've got instructions. Um, so, um, yeah, we've got the lid off already. So one of the jets is the one down in the fuel bowl. Um, I've seen that one. That's all right. Uh, that should be easy enough to do. The other one, I was wondering what this big nut was for on the side of the um, second fuel fuel bowl, um, but it turns out that's just an access point to lay to get a screwdriver in to get the little jet out, which is the one I can't see. So um, we'll do that as well. Grand, thanks, Burton. So um, as per the instructions, that jet down there, that's one of them, and the other one is down that hole down there, and that's the big nut head. Uh, not that you're focusing. Um, that one there uh, is the one we need to remove to get in there. That's all that is there for. And there's a fresh copper washer to go on that as well. I'll give it a blast out. I mean, obviously Musty One would have this in his ultrasonic cleaner in a matter of seconds. But um, I don't have one. Or I certainly don't have one big enough for an entire carburetor. Um, so I'm just going to... I'll give it a blast with carb cleaner before I put the lid back on. But first, let's change the jets. That should be all the tool I need for this one. Make sure we're nice and central before we... There we go. I have a feeling this car carburetor has been rejetted before. I think Pete Sparrow might have had a go at it. Um, because we find with modern fuels, um, 2 CVs do tend to run a bit weak. And um, so um, rejetting can be a good idea. Let's see if we can see what's on it because they all have the jet size written on them so there's an 06 oh, I, that doesn't really mean anything to me yeah uh, let, let, let's see what the new one is let's try and find somewhere safe to put that put that up there and see if we can see what the new one is without getting it out of the bag 115 that's got on it and um yeah hmm Interesting. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna fit that which is gonna be easier without doing the camera and then we'll go in through here and change the little one, which is the smaller one you can see in the pack. That really is a tiddler. So that's the one out of that hole down at the bottom. 
and um, you unscrew it and then it just sits there merrily. So I found a quick blast of WD-40 down that jet, soon popped it out. Getting the new one in is going to be exceedingly interesting, I think. Um, I shall have a go. Of course, the one thing you really don't want to do is drop the sodding thing. And I just did. Oh, this is going to be painful. Yeah, obviously it fell into um, an oil catch container that I hadn't tidied up from earlier. That'll teach me. It won't teach me at all, but still. Right, that's the jets in place. Now to clean up the fuel bowls and um, refit that bolt on the side and um, get the car back together. That looks like it should be attached to something and not just sitting there. Interesting. Right, I've come to the graveyard. There's um, the Reliance engine, um, a Reliant gearbox, um, spare transmission, um, Tuck's old engine, and Ellie's old engine. Um, it's all in bits. But that's where the tube belongs, in there. So let's see if we can refit it. And there we go, a few friendly taps with a hammer later and that tube is back where it should be. I've no idea what it does, but I'm sure it's important. Right, it is time to turn the engine for the first time so I can do the valve clearances. This is quite exciting. Here we go. So we'll start on the inlets. That one's now at maximum squeeze. So we'll adjust the timing on that inlet valve. Ooh. Right, it's a historic moment. We are not trying to start the engine. All I want to do is make sure there's um, oil pressure. Um, so all I've done is wire up the ignition light. Yes. Perfect. You can hear the engine wobbling around because it's not actually attached to the front of the chassis at the moment but um, having got oil pressure up I think we'll just take some time to um, have a good peek around and make sure there are no catastrophic early leaks um, because that's what we really don't want can't see any at the moment so I think I shall continue to reassemble, and we'll take that as a good sign. Right. In theory, I've managed to loosely check everything together enough for a quick test run. Oh, this is um, exciting and terrifying at the same time. And um, I'll give you a noise warning, there is no exhaust hooked up. This is going to be loud. Oh. Or it will be if I connect the battery up. Here we go then. So um, we've got ignition. Uh, the carburetor float bowl will be completely empty. So um, that's probably why we're not getting an instant spark. At least I get the oil pressure off. It may also be that the ignition timing is off because um, uh, I haven't actually got all the parts to fit the one, two, three. Um, there are some magnets needed as well, so there's a very strong chance the ignition timing is off. So um, I mean, at least got the oil circulating quite nicely. And still being able to see there are no leaks. Oh yeah, we definitely got fuel. You can see it leaking out the carburetor. That's what it does as the float level comes up. Um, if it gets too much, there is no return line. It just dribbles it all over the engine. Interesting. Right, um, let's have a look gander at this then. Right, it's my own fault. Um, we weren't getting a dead ignition. Um, where that light was just staying on the, all the time. And... Um, it's because it's still wet in here from when I was washing down the engine bay. 
so um, clearly a fair bit of water did manage to get in um, so might have to just dress the points or maybe that's all right now I've just flicked it a few times no, that's not great is it Right, well, we'll dress those points and we'll try again. Right, let's go again. Again, noise warning. Time, so I apologize for the shakiness, I'm too excited. Oh, right, there's still an awful lot to do to make sense of all this madness, but um, she runs and um, I can now have a good check because that was proper oil pressure going on. So I can check all the connections, make sure we've got no oil leaking out. I think that's just residue from before. And um, oh, hello, Steam, you've just messaged me while I'm recording. Oh. Right, I need I need to go out because um, I'm going out for lunch. So um, the good news is we have a running two CV. Uh, never leave a car in the garage with a battery connected. Good times. That sounded awesome. Right, before I get too far too carried away with buttoning this engine back up again, I found the missing bits for the one two three ignition, namely these two magnets. Because how the one two three unit works is it reads the magnets. So it can um, provide the correct ignition timing. And um, let's go and grab the unit itself. So that's it. And um, yeah, there's two receivers on that circuit board in the back, or probably one. Uh, it just detects when the coil needs to fire. So that replaces this points box. It re replaces the points assisted box in there as a transistor and um means i can get rid of quite a lot of quite nasty wiring to be honest so um i'm going to do that all right we've got the one two three ignition fitted now um so i think we're due a trial run on the one two three ignition still no exhaust so this still comes with a major loud warning Oh, there she goes. Let's try a squirt of throttle and a bit less choke. It's not actually that cold today, she doesn't need too much choke.
can call that success. Oh, look at the madness. It's amazing how angry this makes some people on the internet. But don't worry, I will definitely tidy up before the Reliant Fox project begins. He says. Right. What does she sound like with an actual exhaust? Smooth and purposeful, I'd say. That exhaust sounds a bit more robust than it did. Absolutely sound as a pound. Beautiful. Now I'm slightly concerned to see it still looks a bit damp around this cooler union. Especially as I can't get at it now. Maybe I should have put something on the um, threads, but I thought it was most sensible not to do that. It's difficult to see what's fresh and what's previous ick. Um, Nonetheless, um, we have an engine that is vastly better. These joints seem bone dry, so that's good. So I think I'm just going to monitor those things and see how it goes. I might get her a bit more together um, so I can pull her out and run her for a bit longer because I can't run her very long in here because it's the garage and it stinks the whole house out. So I think I'm going to end this one there. Um, we've got her running again. She sounds very sweet. I need to keep an eye on the oil situation before getting too carried away with rebuilding everything. At the moment, I can quite easily get this cowling back off again, should I feel the need. Oh, and there's a washer eye. <laughs> Dropped earlier. Excellent. Got that one back. Uh, I also need to put the appropriate penny washers on here. I completely forgot those, so that's my fault. But, um, yeah, 652 conversion continues apace. Uh, hopefully in the next one, we can go for a drive. What do you reckon to that, Ellie? She mostly just looks very angry, but her nose has come off. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I shall see you in a future video. Farewell.